Hello everyone. In this session, we are going to solve earthing system related equations that we will need in our design using this Excel sheet and also with the help of some external tables that we will refer to during this process. In the previous session, we explored types of earthing system, components of earthing system, and also steps for the installation of an earthing system. As a reminder, when explaining the steps of installation of earthing system, it was mentioned that the first step in the design is to measure the resistance of the soil where the project is exactly located. We can do that by studying the area of the project and by referring to a table that gathers types of soil, which includes the resistivity for each type. Or we can do that also accurately by using some special devices to measure the resistivity of the soil. Let's see how we can do that and start our calculations using this Excel sheet. This sheet divides the process of calculations into three steps. The first step is to obtain the resistance of each rod. We are going to use this formula to solve this resistance or to obtain the value of the resistance of each rod. This formula equals the resistivity of the soil divided by 2 pi multiplied by the length of the rod, multiplied by length, multiplied by 8, multiplied by the length of the rod divided by its diameter, minus 1. We will simply enter our values in these cells with the help of an external table and catalog that I will open shortly. Then the result will be calculated at this cell. The second step is for obtaining the resistance of more than one rod. We can see here the formula that we are going to use equals resistance of one rod multiplied by one multiplied by the factor lambda multiplied by a divided by n where n is the number of electrodes and a equals resistivity of the soil divided by 2 pi multiplied by the resistance of one rod. However, this step is considered the major step because we will be trying many options to reach the total resistance for all roads with an amount of less than one ohm. At this step, we will use the trial and error method to achieve the target resistance. And then we have the third step, which is to calculate. We have this third step over here which is for calculating the conductor's cross-sectional area or the size of the earthing conductor. We have seen previously that we have two methods, either by using this formula, which is more accurate, or the other method, which is by using a table to determine the size of the conductor in relationship with the size of the phase conductor. To solve this equation, we have to obtain the I short circuit value and enter it in this cell. Also, we can enter the trip of, or the time to trip of the circuit breaker, which could be in most cases one second. And finally, we will have to obtain the K factor, which we can obtain from another external table. Then the size of the conductor will be reflected or calculated at this cell in millimeter squared. Now let's apply these steps by solving one example, but first let me open this Word file that contains tables that we should be using as a reference, and also it includes some important notes that we should consider during our design. These notes include first to ensure that a maximum allowed resistivity of all rods shall not exceed 1 ohm. That's important for us, especially for low voltage. However, for medium voltage, 5 ohms is allowed to be achieved or a target resistivity to be achieved. Then second note states that a minimum earth conductor size of 2.5 mm squared shall be installed if it is mechanically protected and 4 mm squared if it is not mechanically protected. Three, in order to protect the conductor from corrosion, a minimum size of four millimeter squared 
to be selected. Four, when using the grounding conductor buried under the surface of the ground, it must be protected from corrosion by providing coating layer and also it is recommended that the cross-sectional area of the copper conductor or the copper coated steel be not less than 16 mm squared. And final note here, in case that the conductors are not protected from corrosion, the cross-sectional area of the conductor shall not be less than 25 mm squared for copper and 50 mm squared for steel. And the thickness of the copper strips should not be less than 3 mm. Now let's look into some important tables that will provide us some help during our calculations. Table 1 here provides the ground resistivity for various kinds of soil, including the range of values and also the average value, which what we are going to be selecting from. Then second table here provides the lambda factors for parallel rods that are installed in line, same like this shape. Then the third table is similar to the second table, but this table is providing the lambda factors for rods installed in a square shape. In case our rods placed in triangular or an L shape, then we will assume the lambda factor as 1.66. Then we have here the K factor table, which is for obtaining the K factor of the cross-sectional area of the earth conductor. And finally, we have this table, which is used for earth conductor sizing, which is or which has a relationship with the line conductor. We already have seen this table in the previous session. Now let's get back to our Excel sheet and solve one example. As a first step, we will calculate the resistance of one rod. But first, entering the soil thermal resistivity value in ohms per meter should be obtained. So as we said, for obtaining the soil thermal resistivity, we will refer to table one. So by referring to table one and supposing that the project we are designing is going to be placed on silt and sand clay ground, which has an average value of 100 ohms per meter. So I'll enter here 100 ohms. Second, is to enter the length and diameter of the rod. We can precisely obtain the accurate length and diameter using one of the catalogs. For example, let me open this catalog and check different lengths of electrodes right here. Now we can choose among these lengths and diameters I will go for the highest length over here, which is three meters, around three meters, and has a diameter of 32 millimeter. So I'll go back to the Excel sheet and enter a length of three meters. And also I will enter the diameter. But first, remember to convert the millimeter to meters. So the diameter is 32 millimeters, which is 0 0.032 meters. Now, as you can see, we got a value for each rod or a value of resistivity for each rod of 29.8 meters. Right now, we calculated the resistance of one rod. Moving to the next step of calculating the resistance of number of rods, we have to obtain the lambda factor from table 2 and table 3. Let's check the table. Now let's assume that our electrodes or rods will be placed in square shape. 
So for example, let's choose 12 number of electrodes, which on the other side shows a lambda factor of 8.3. So the lambda factor is 8.3. The distance between the rods, we have to ensure that it is at least two times the length of the copper electrode. So two times means more than six meters. I will select or enter 10, which is better. And the number of rods as we got from the table, table three was 12 rods. Now you see here that we got an overall value of 3.5 resistance for all rods. As we said before, our target is to be maximum one ohm. So we will have to apply the trial and error method to change these values manually for the aim of reducing this resistance to be less than one ohm. Let's take a higher lambda factor, for example, again, which is for the 20 electrodes, 9.4. So I'll change the lambda factor of 9.4 and the number of rods are 20. You see that the value decreased from 3 point something to 2 point something. Even we can increase the distance between the earth pits or the rods. You see the more that we increase the distance, the less we get the resistance. And so on. So we can continue this process until we achieve the desired resistance of less than one ohms. Also note that the soil thermal resistivity may be less than that actual or in the reality it may be like 80 or 70, especially with the help of the enhancement material it can go less than that and then you will see that the resistance value is Reducing. So as I said, we will just make the trial and error method changing these values. We even can select a length rod of six meters. Maximum we have six meters. The diameter, let's keep it as it is. So the more the more the length of the rod, you see that we achieved the desired value, which is less than one. So we will keep making our options we will keep trying until we reach this value which is less than one ohm now moving to step three which is for sizing the earth conductor i will first enter the type to trip the breaker which could be one second then i will also enter the short circuit current calculated for this cable assuming that this cable connects an MDB to SMDB with a value of I short circuit 44, but we have to enter this value in amperes, so it will be 44,000. And then we will obtain the K factor from table four. Supposing that, let's go to table four, and supposing that we are using a copper conductor and it is XLPE insulated, so the K factor will be 176. So if I enter 176, this will give us a cross-sectional area of 250 millimeters squared, which we can select the nearest available size of 300 millimeters squared. As I mentioned previously, you have the choice to select the method of sizing an earth conductor either using this way or by using the table which employs a relationship to the size of the phase conductor, which is included in this file as well. So at the end of this video, I think that I have cleared how to calculate the resistance of earth rods by applying trial and error method to reach the target resistance of one ohm if we are designing a low voltage system. The next step will be designing the system earthing using AutoCAD. So we are going to use these values that we have obtained. We will use, for example, the number of rods. We have here 
20 number of rows. This means that we will design 20 earth pits around our building that are having a distance of 20 meters between each earth pit to the other. And also we will use these values in our design to ensure that the design is made or is calculated properly.